Hi, I'm Rag from Melior, and today we'll be going over this clip that you can see that's playing in the background. Now, as you can see on the right hand side, we have the node tree structure, and it's actually a very simple structure that I will go through node by node. And if you're a beginner to DaVinci Resolve and color grading, hopefully this will shed some light on how you can get a very specific look with very little effort. Now, it may look like a lot if you're a beginner, but it should be simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to get rid of all of these nodes and what we'll do is begin from the beginning. So I am actually currently in the Faroe Islands and this is a clip I actually shot yesterday on a ferry trip to Michinis, Michinis, which is one of the islands here. So to create a new node, which will be called a serial node, is we press option or if you're on the desktop, press control S. That will create a new node. So which you can see has been created here. So what we're gonna to do to actually begin with is before you color grade any video, what you're gonna do is actually, you're gonna create all your node tree structure to begin with. Then you can add or take away from it if you wanted to do so. So what I'm gonna do is press option S or control S if you're using a desktop. So option S, option S, option S. So I'm gonna create four nodes. And then what I'm actually gonna do is press option or control L. So what this is actually going to create is a layer mixer node. And basically we have two nodes on top of each other in a almost parallel fashion. And what this helps us to do is pick out specific colors and color grade in a very unique manner that you can't do on something like Premiere Pro. So after this, I'm going to click on this little icon here and then I'm going to press Option or Control L. So Option, control, I mean, option or Control S and then Option and Control S. And this will be our node tree. So what I'm going to do here now is we can go and label all of our nodes. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to label all of these just so you understand what we're going to be doing. So today uh, we're actually going to be using something called color space transform. And this is help, going to help convert if you were shooting in log footage, then it's going to help us convert log footage to something like Rec 709. So in Rec 709 is like the normal images you see. So say if you're shooting on a phone, the image that comes straight out of a phone is Rec 709. So it's that particular look. So if you watch TV or broadcast, anything to do with broadcast, that's all Rec 709. So we're gonna convert our log footage to Rec 709 and then we can go from there. We are shooting on the Sony A7S3 at S log three. So we are shooting with 10 bit footage. So with 10 bit footage, you can really pull things um, and using color space transform is a great way to go. So on node three, we can add this as our CST. Node two can be our saturation. Node one can be our contrast. This one can be the water. Uh, this one can be the background. This can be our global node. And this one can be our sharpening. So what we'll begin with first, as I mentioned before, is we're going to go over to our CST, we're going to go to effects, we're going to go over to color, space transform, as you see here, we're going to drag this, place this over this node right here. Our input color space, because we shot on slog3 and scamma 3cine for the color space, we're going to put scamma 3cine and our input gamma will be slog3. So our output color space and our output gamma will be Rec 709, as you can see. Now we would have converted our log footage, which you can see here, to a Rec 709 image. So now we have a Rec 709 image. However, if we want to do color separation, uh, we need to have a bit more contrast and saturation in the image because this creates a bit more separation between the tones and the colors. And this is what will allow us to do a better color separation, which will make sense once we get to these nodes here. So this is why we have these two nodes right here. So on the contrast, all I'm going to do is increase this contrast. And basically, we're going to see our scopes right here at the bottom. So we're using the parade. And this is our highlights at the top, our shadows at the bottom and our midtones in the middle and basically we want to stretch this out as much as we can for when for when we actually do color separation which is on these two nodes on the layer mix node so when i've added a bit more contrast i can increase this until i find a nice point here-ish you can use your pivot to either adjust the point of the contrast so you can either increase or decrease it so i'm actually increasing a little bit 
by increasing contrast a little bit, you're going to get a bit more of the details within the highlights come back. And if you were to decrease it, you might decrease uh, you may decrease the amount of details within the highlights, which you might have to bring back again afterwards. Uh, but for this for this time, we're actually going to be increasing our pivot. But you'll see on our other videos, we'll usually decrease the pivot as if we're shooting with people, it helps to get more clear skin tones. But for now, we're actually going to increase it a little bit. Now you can see we've got a bit more detail, a bit more contrast, but what we're missing is saturation. So we can then go over to our saturation and you see the saturation at the bottom here. And we're just going to simply bump this up to 100%. Now, if you're using 10-bit footage, which I am now, we can use this saturation right here and bump it up to 100%. However, if we are shooting with 8-bit footage, like on the Sony a7 III, what we can do is go to our RGB color, go to our red output, increase this to 100, our green output, increase this to 100, and blue output, increase that to 100. And by doing it that way for 8-bit footage, you're gonna prevent your footage getting blocky and breaking up uh, simply because the way you increase saturation this way is a lot less damaging to the uh, the footage. Um, but today we're just going to stick with 10-bit footage. I don't want to make this more complicated than it is. But as you can see now, what we have is an image with good contrast and an image with good color. Now, as you can see at the bottom here, we are clipping a little bit in the black. So we, what we can do in the contrast is we can also use our primary color wheels and your lift is your shadows, your gamma is your midtones, your gain is actually your highlights and your offset is your overall image. So as you can see at the bottom, what I remember, what I said is at the bottom is the shadows and you can see it's clipping. And what it means by clipping is you've lost detail uh, beyond a certain point. So we're losing details within our blacks, which we don't want too much. So I'm going to bring that lift just a little bit. You can bring it higher, but um, I'm just going to bring it just a bit. But you can also use your eyes uh, and you can see that the only bit that's really clipping will probably be these parts in the waves. So it's not too much of an issue. So I brought it up, um, bring it up a little bit. Actually, I haven't actually changed it at all. So yeah, it doesn't matter too much. Just make sure you'll be able to use your eye, but you can also use scopes. Just make sure they're not clipping too much. Now, what you can also do, of course, is your white balance is important and you can do this within your saturation. You want all of these curves to be in a very similar level and that will help you give get a better color separation for when we're doing our color separation here. So what we can do in our saturation is we can make another node for white balance, but to keep it simple, we won't. So as you can see in the highlights, we have more reds than we have greens and blues. So we can go over to our gains, move uh, move the gain more towards the those areas. So now, as you can see, I've moved the gain towards the blues and they're all leveled out a lot more better in that sense. I know the shadows aren't completely separated, but if I was to push this too much and, in, and try and fix it, then you're going to see the colors look a bit whack. Um, so also be a bit vigilant and use your eye. So I think this is a good starting point for us to do our main color separation, which I'm very excited for because it is the best thing. Yeah, it's awesome. So with the water, so what we're going to do with the water is we're going to go over to a qualifier. So select this water node, go over to your qualifier, select the water and then press shift H. Now when I press shift H, you'll be able to see that we've selected the water. Now, obviously, as you can see, the color separation has not been the best. So we can do this a bit more manually by using the qualifier plus button. So I can go in and select more of this water that you can see here. Alternatively, if you want to do a bit more manually, you can use these. So here we're selecting the particular hue. Here we're selecting the particular saturation we want. And here we're selecting the particular luminance that we want. So here we can increase saturation uh, and we can increase the width of these blues. We don't want to select the rope. So we're going to actually shift the center away from that. We can increase the luminance because we want more of that sky and we can increase, decrease the luminance. And I think that's a good point. And if everything is still looking a little bit blotchy, we can go over to our matte finesse or for our qualifier and go increase the denoise uh, and you can increase your blur radius. And that's good. And you can press play to see if there's any blotchiness or, you know, flickering that you can see up around about here. So I think that we can, you'd be able to get a better gauge once we actually start changing the colors. So if I was press shift H, 
what I'm going to do now and what you'll be able to see is that now we've selected the blues if I was to decrease the saturation fully you'll be able to see we've actually decreased only the blues uh, which is really cool and but we haven't got to the really cool part yet which we will do in a second the color that I actually want in the blues is more of a teal color so I can simply go over to my hue and shift this a bit more towards the aqua so increasing it a little bit like so but not too much and I can go over to my gamma push a bit more color into those blues by moving you know more blues into the midtones so you can see here so you'll be able to see now a if I was to press option if I was to press command D or control D to turn the node off and on so you before and after and we've added a nice bit of turquoise uh, blue and saturation into it um, that you can see here now the magical part and the best part of the layer mixer node is everything that we've done on this water node that you can see here will not be affected whenever we do any adjustments to this background layer it'll make sense when i do it so if i click on this background layer and i was to now go over to my game just to show you and smash the oranges all the way up you'll be able to see without having to make any color separations i've now everything that wasn't affected on the water node is now being affected so what you can do is do a dual color separation which we can do right here so actually what i do actually want to do is i want to add a little bit of orange to this but obviously not too crazy and with this background layer, you never want to push too hard because what you can do is add a little bit of extra color or take away color create your specific look but then we use the global node to really dial in that color so with the background, I want to get a bit more of a sunset -y kind of feel, like a very early sunset, just about when golden hour kind of hits. So what I'm going to do is go over to my gamma, simply shift this towards the oranges. So if I was to press Command D or Control D, if you're using desktop, before and after, you can see that color just come in quite nice onto the railings, which gives it, you know, just a bit more vibrancy i guess and you can press play and see what it kind of looks like and it's looking okay it's not looking too bad now if you do have a bit of haziness in the background you might get a color botching that you can see around here but it's actually not too bad because we have water actually spraying onto the lens which is causing it to flicker a little bit but this doesn't matter too much so now we've actually done our background and our water and it looks awesome uh, and you can leave it there if you wanted to but now what we actually want to do is refine the look a little bit more and use our global node uh, so we're actually going to add a little bit more warmth to this using the global node so this is basically our final look so i'm actually going to go over to my midtones again and shift this towards the greens and the yellows and you can see like immediately how much of a difference that makes if i was to press command d or control d you can see the that color separation and that nice added warmth into the actual frame and it just looks it looks pretty nice uh, it gives it almost that Italian coast kind of vibes Amalfi Coast vibes or Monaco vibes uh, if you get what I mean so you can enhance this look however way you wish with a global look it just helps blend everything in the other thing is say if I wanted to push the greens within this clip like so but I don't like the fact that the green that I'm adding is adjusting the color of the water. But now, since I have everything in place, I can go back into my water node and change the hue of this again. So now I can shift this water more towards a blue look. So I can go back into that old node and shift the color again. No matter how much I change the global node, I can go back and get back the color that I desire while still having everything being merged together. So it's a really cool little thing that you can do. So if I was to move this where it was, maybe you want to add some warmth to it or some blues to it. You can go however you wish to go for. So then what I want to do is actually going to use our curves, create three points on your curves. Again, with curves, upper part highlights, middle part midtones, and the low part is your shadows. So what I'm going to do is actually decrease, nope, increase the shadows a little bit to give it a bit more of that filmy look. Um, and then I'm actually going to 
mm, kind of liked it, kind of how it was, to be honest. The great thing about color grading is as you go, you can create the look you want to create. But I'm actually going to drop the highlights just a little bit, just to flatten the image. Again, helping to create more of that filmic tone, as you can see in this clip right here. So if you was to press play, it looks quite nice, but to be honest, I might want to bring those, I think we may have overdone it here. And I think I want to add a bit more warmth to the image so I can use my offset actually, like so, like here. And then I can actually use my gamma gains and midtones to drop the image in a specific way. So then you have this specific look right here, which is similar to the look that I created on my reel um, the other day. So again, whoop. so again, if you want to change the color of the water, you can go back, shift the color of the water um, using your hue, or you can shift the color using your gamma or your gain, it doesn't matter what you use, uh, the waters, you'll be able to tell the water really seems to be falling into the midtones and the highlights. So you can use it either or, uh, like so, and you'll be able to add a bit more saturation and color and just get the look that you desire. So you can play with this however you wish. And finally, if you wanted to sharpen the image, go with your sharpening and decrease the radius to 0.47 or 0.46 or 0.48, however you wish, and you would have sharpened your image. And that's the final look. One more thing that you can do if you wanted to was go over to your timeline, output blanking, a little frame around the image, which you can see here. So yeah, I hope that was somewhat helpful.